Welcome back to my channel. If you're looking for stock market goodness in this video, that's not gonna happen. This is where I rant and talk about things that I see in the media and just what's going on in my life. Anyways, okay, I got a headache today. I just slept terribly last night. You ever just, you ever one of those nights where you go to bed right? And you think you get a decent night's sleep and you wake up in the morning and the alarm clock goes off and it feels like you went to bed maybe 15 minutes ago and you just, you have to just suffer through the day. I drank three cups of coffee today and then I worked and now I'm, I'm home doing this podcast and I don't know what it is, man. It was just an off day. But anyways, I even covered this topic. So, as you all know, you know, I'm a pretty big fan of Rogan's podcast. I think Joe is uh, an interesting cat, man. I got into his podcast. I've talked about him several times on my channel. I got into his podcast in 2011 I'm not saying that because I think that that makes me cool. It was just an accident that I got in. I, I started watching his podcast. I uh, I had a buddy when I was in the Air Force, and he first mentioned Rogan's podcast in like 2009 or 10, something like that. And I didn't put much stock in. I was like the UFC fear factor dude. He goes, yeah. He's like, he's got an interesting podcast, man. I go, what happens? He goes. Rogan generally just gets blasted out of his mind high and he just rambles about with his friends about ayahuasca and stuff like that. I was like, ah, oh, I'm in. So I checked out his YouTube channel and I got into his podcast that way. So, I mean, it, it, Jake Uger is, you know, he's that young Turks dude and you know, he, he's got his super lefty opinions. And, you know, I used to think the dude was like somewhat cool. I didn't agree with a lot of his stances on things, right? And hold on a second. But I forgot to grab my water before I started this podcast. But not drunk. I'm still not drinking. But... Jake would go on the uh, on Rogan's podcast, and they always seem to have a pretty pleasant conversation because Rogan is, after all, mostly a lefty dude. He votes independent, but that's probably because he just sees the corruption in the Democrat Party and the Republican Party. Whatever. Vote for whoever you want. I don't judge you. If you voted for Biden, good. You know, that's the way things go. I didn't. I voted for Trump, but... I'm not one of those diehard Trumpers. I just didn't like the choices that were pre presented to me on the left. And the left has gone totalitarian and socialistic. So I just, nah, I'm not, I'm avoid the Democratic Party for now. Uh, I am more of like a centrist independent. But Rogan would always have mine and... They always seem to have pleasant conversations. He would also have on Anna Kasparian, who, much to her credit in the Kyle Rittenhouse case, has said that she was misled and she didn't understand the facts and the circumstances surrounding it. As this stuff is, I didn't know. Personally, I was like, what is this going on? Until all the trial and I started paying attention to it. And we'll get to, it looks pretty good that he's going to get off. Anyways, Fat Jank Uger has been calling out Rogan and saying ridiculous stuff about him. S you know, saying that his podcast is alt right now. And you got to wonder what it's about. And I think it's Rogan just hasn't had him on and he's trying to drum up support for his show, The Young Turks, which, by the way, The Young Tur Turks was kind of a racist term because they were people that were involved in the Armenian genocide, by the way. But anyways, we'll ignore that. 
because my Armenian genocide history is not exactly 100% up to date. Anyways, he calls out Rogan, says ridiculous things like he used to fight when he was younger and he would be a match for Rogan because he's bigger. And I just look at him and I'm like, dude, Rogan would kick you one time in your fat stomach and you would be regretting life. But it comes to the larger question and it doesn't even have anything to do with Jake. It has to do with the left's obsession with Rogan. So you have to wonder what's behind him. Because when you go and you watch the media, right? It's all old horse to wormer Rogan. He's out there spreading misinformation, which is code today for anything that doesn't go for the popular narrative that the left wants, like in Silicon Valley or wherever. Anything that Mark Zuckerberg doesn't want getting out like the Hunter Biden laptop. <laughs> By the way, Mark Zuckerberg is not a human being. I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced that he's an android built by some greater artificial intelligence to usher in the matrix. But we got to wonder, why does the, what is the media's obsession with Rogan? I mean, Rogan can't even like fart in the bathroom without CNN reporting on it. And you got some, you know, fat little turd wearing makeup like Brian Shelter, Skelter, whatever that fat little turd's name is. He's up there and, and you know, he's given his corporate media opinion on everything. And what is the reason behind this? It's easy. Rogan's a threat to legacy media. Rogan gets about a billion views a month. If you actually look at like the number of downloads, I think it's something like that. I would have to go back probably between listening um, solely online and listening to the video. I'd have to look at Spotify stats right now. But on average, he was getting three to five million views or listens per month on his podcast. Okay, compare that to what like fat little troll man, Brian Shelter, what is it? Skelter, Shelter? I'm like, the dude is a turd that in, the, in, the, in a truck stop toilet that should be flushed. He's a fat little greasy dude that's wearing makeup. That's like how I don't trust you is when you're a fat little creepy dude and you're on TV. Like, if I was a reporter and they're like, we got to put makeup on you, I'd be like, I'm not wearing makeup. They're like, no, um, it's pretty standard for the cameras. We're going to put makeup on you. I'm like, you ain't putting any makeup on me. I'm not wearing that stuff. Like, how low do you have to be that you're a fat little troll man wearing lipstick and giving, like, how little, how much little respect do you have for yourself that you're a fat little troll man just spitting out propaganda and lies and you have makeup on while you're doing it. Like, can you imagine? Like, what must be the horrified look of dude's father? Like, all you are is a mouthpiece for the Democratic Party and you're wearing lipstick, lipstick on TV. There's like no level of you that is man. But that's the thing. That's why they go after Rogan so hard. Rogan is a threat to the establishment because it is not just Rogan. It's, it, it, I, I'm using Rogan as a proxy here, basically. The entire thing of the podcasting realm, which there were pioneers. Rogan wasn't the first. Mark Marin was before him, so you could include that in here. Or Adam Curry, who's, who's you know referred to as the pod father but, by Rogan. But... What it is, is it's a threat to legacy media. You have to look at, if you look up how many podcasts are out there and what people are listening to, it's far more likely that a person is into a particular podcast than they are to going home at night and tuning into CNN and seeing what Democrat corporate propaganda they're spewing out of their mouths. Like, their narrative is completely against the facts that I'm actually looking at when I'm watching TV. It's like, oh, they, 
yeah, the, the Kyle Rittenhouse, blah blah blah, and he, you know he was a uh, he went there to kill people. I was like, look, dude, a chomo tried to take his gun from him. I'm watching it on the video, like he was right up on him. Like he, you know, what are you talking about? I, I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I'm not in the jury room. Whatever the, I tend to go with what the jury says. If the jury not guilty, okay, not guilty. I mean, you, you got the facts of the case, but. Rogan in podcasting in general is just such a massive threat to the establishment that they want to discredit it. Because really what ultimately what Google and Facebook wanted was to merge with legacy media like CNN, Fox News, MSNBC and become a new form of legacy media that takes its marching order from the elite's and the people in Washington. They want one particular narrative and they want a channel that goes against that particular narrative. But ultimately, it's all just corporate dribble. Drivel. You know, I do like Greg Gutfeld's show, by the way. I think he's funny. Um, I, like I said, I don't agree with a lot of the right-wing narrative, but they're the only people that seem to be having a good time right now and aren't just panicking. So, I mean, that's what it is, in my opinion, is it's legacy media wanting to take down the new kings because most of these people, they're not taking corporate marching orders. They're just like, I have a small channel. Nobody listens to me. I just get on here and I rant and I do it because I enjoy it. And it'll probably come back to haunt me at some point when I inevitably call somebody a C word that I couldn't, shouldn't have called a C word. And I don't know what's coming out of my mouth in the next minute, but, you know, it is what it is. You have a guy out there who has such a large platform and he starts taking a medication that begins with an I that goes, he starts taking horse paste, for lack of a better term, and it goes against the popular narrative. And, oh, lo and behold, CNN is sponsored by Merck, who just happened to be releasing a drug that does the exact same thing as the horse paste, paste, but yet it's a it's not a generic drug, so they can profit off it. And that's I mean that's it. What it is, podcasting is a threat to the established order, and the elites are just waking up to it now. They're too late to the party, and the cat is out of the bag. So the only thing they can do is dispense their corporate hitmen to try and go after Rogan. But here's the thing. You can go after Rogan as much as you want. You're not going to take him down. He's going to do this as long as he feels like doing it. And I mean, his podcast is easy. He gets on there, talks to the people that he wants to talk to, and people want to listen and people like it because they like hearing stuff from a no-filter guy who is a regular dude, by the way, who somehow managed to stay pretty humble in what is an otherwise untenable situation. The level of fame and the hangers-on that probably try to latch on to that dude has got to be just mind-boggling at this point. And he's probably walking around high right now going, I don't even know how I got myself into this situation. How did I get myself in a situation where legacy media is coming after me and trying to discredit me simply because I went to the doctor and my doctor gave me a prescription for horse paste? I know it's not horse paste. I just have to say that because my channel can vanish overnight and then I'd have to do the hard work of six months to track down 427 subscribers not exactly like I'm rolling in dough, but that's all it is. It's an attempt to take down a larger voice that legacy media wants to co op from a guy who refuses to be co opted. The attacks are coming. Jank is desperate. He's probably jealous. He's of the fact that Rogan's in shape, A, and B, he's probably jealous of the ratings because 
What does the Young Turks really do? Does anybody really listen to them? What is it? It's Anna Kasparian whining about something progressive and agreeing with fat jank Uger. That's all it is. And him trying to drum up support by his channel for his for his stupid channel by going after uh, Alex Jones or whatever the fat turd is doing. It's like, bro, you're in your 40s approaching 50. You're too old to be fighting. I'm 43. I'm too old to be getting in fights with people. Like, unless you're fighting in a cage when you're over the age of 18, you're too old to be getting in fights. That's how that works when you become an adult. But whatever. It is what it is. Let's see how, what else I want to move on to. You know what? I'm not really not feeling well. So I think I got to do a uh, stock uh update. So I'm just going to call that a podcast. I'll try to come back with multiple subjects, but tonight was just me rambling about my opinions on why the media targets Rogan. Love him or hate him or indifferent. It's really just jealousy. And that's the reason people are trying to take him down. So like and subscribe or don't. And I'm out. Thanks for listening.